How much time could you save if Microsoft Word could help you create repetitive emails, letters, or even labels? When you have repetitive actions, such as sending an email or a letter to multiple people, Word's Mail Merge features might be the answer. In this series on Word Mail Merge, we'll first look at the basics of getting started with a Mail Merge project. Other videos in the series will cover creating email, customizing Mail Merge documents, shortcuts, filtering and sorting, tricks with Excel and Mail Merge, and specialty Mail Merge projects. Look in the description below for links to other videos as they are added to the series on Mail Merge features in Word. With a Mail Merge, you'll start with a master document or layout such as a letter or an email that you'd like to create for multiple contacts. The contacts, such as customers, are in a data source, which might be a Word table, an Excel worksheet, even your Outlook contacts, or an Access database table. When these are combined, you'll see your merge results to print or send electronically. To build a mail merge project, you can either use the step-by-step -step mail merge wizard, or once you learn the basics, you can perform a mail merge manually. As we'll see in this series with Word Mail Merge, you have multiple ways to customize and personalize the end result. Anything from your greetings and address to specific fields, you can filter and sort, only focus on certain contacts or entries, and even add custom text or offers. Let's get started. So I have this form letter in Word. And my goal is that I might want to print it out physically or even create a PDF from it. But I want to customize it for a group of contacts. In this case, my contacts are an Excel worksheet. And I have them broken out by the different fields that I might want to draw upon, whether it's for this letter or for other projects, such as an email. To start the Mail Merge project, we'll first of all go to the Mailings Ribbon tab and then choose Start Mail Merge. I could manually select one of these options, so this gives you kind of an overview of what's possible. Instead, I'll pick the Step-by-Step -step Mail Merge Wizard. Notice then from this pane over on the right-hand side that now we can pick the document type, which we just saw in that list of options. So this is a letter, and we'll pick Next. I'll use the current document, so this is part of how we prepare to get this project started rather than having to go and open up something else. Our next step is to select the recipients. Once again, we could create a new list, but it's a lot easier if you have that existing list, whether it's a Word table or, in this case, an Excel worksheet. Because I'm using an existing list, I'll browse to the location that contains my list of contacts. So here I have my Excel file, Media Contacts. I'll simply select it and choose Open. If there are multiple worksheet tabs, we would specify the one we want. And notice the first row of data contains column headers. So that's also helpful for you when you're working with this. That is, don't have any extraneous titles there. Your column headings should be on row one. And I'll choose OK. So here we can see the data source, the mail merge recipients. And as we'll explore in other videos in this series, we have options here, for instance, to sort and filter and to apply other management of this data. As I'm looking at the list here in Excel, some of the things that will help you is that you want to make sure you have a unique name for each field. Begin the field names with a letter. If not, if there's a number in front of them, then Word will add an underscore for that. You can use up to 40 characters in the field name. Remove your blank records and fields on that. It's preferable not to use spaces and field names, which you can see in this case that we do have that. So what will happen is that they will be displayed with a underscore between those words rather than showing the spaces. So let's continue with our project. I'll go ahead and OK as I just confirm that this is the correct list. And next, we'll write the letter. So at this point, I could add the fields in individually. For this, I'll simply select the area I've kind of set aside or designated for the name and address. Once you're more familiar with the mail merge, this is a lot more flexible, but I'm simply going to pick address block. Notice as well, we have the mailings ribbon, and these same options are up here in the ribbon, so we wouldn't have to pick them from the wizard. Here I'll pick address block. 
The address block field is designed to combine the commonly used fields for an address, including the name, the address, city, state. It will attempt to show you <laughs> what it thinks is correct. Now, if it did not find a correct match, or if there's any issues with how things are labeled, then you could go to match fields to make sure that it's matching up or aligning that. For this project, these are pretty consistent with what it would recognize, but you can see things like postal code and zip code, a little bit of a difference with some of these things. So this looks fine, I'll close it. I could also then elect to get a little bit more informal, for instance, here, with just the first name or a little bit more formal. So I'll stick with this layout for the address block. Now, if for any reason I didn't have a company for some of them, no problems, that will be accommodated as well. We'll continue with an OK, and notice that it's put that address block there. So I no longer need this placeholder text, and I'm going to go ahead and delete it. But you'll see those brackets around that address block. That will determine what we will see in our final result. We'll also add the greeting here. I'll just go ahead and take it out this time. And over here on the right-hand side, we have our greeting line. And how do we want to start this? Well, we can have it be a dear or two. We could have none. We could just have their first name there. It's up to you on that. And I'm going to keep this a little bit more informal and just put in their first name. Now, what kind of punctuation do I want to follow with that? It could be a comma. It could be a colon. We'll use a colon from a business perspective. Now, if I did not have a first name here, then I could modify this. I could leave it blank, by the way to whom it may concern, and we can get kind of a preview of what this first one looks like. And so this can be helpful for you to just to see if you're on the right track here. And once again, if it wasn't able to match up, match fields might be helpful here. That's OK to continue. And I'll hit enter here just to add that extra spacing there. You might also have fields that you like to add into the body of your letter or email. And this can also be easily added. Here I have city. So I'll take that out. That was just a placeholder for me. And I can choose more items. And so what happens here, here's a list of my database items here. And I want to add city here. And I'll go ahead and insert and we'll close. And I want to make sure I have that space. So now I've set up the structure of what I would like to merge in from that list. Now we're ready to preview our document to see how well did I do here. And the easy way to do that then is from this mailings ribbon here, we'll preview results. And we can simply move through those. So I'll go back to the beginning here and navigate through these. You may not choose to preview all of them, but it can be helpful in case there's any gap in the information or maybe something that has to be updated in the original contact list. Another way for me to preview my letters is through the wizard. So here's my option, preview your letters, and we can move them through them here as well. And finally, complete the merge. Now a common mistake, especially if you're doing this manually, is a lot of people stop here and then they just simply print off each one of these individually. And that is a big waste of time. So what we need to do next is to complete the merge. We'll pick this option in the wizard and our choices are to either print directly or edit the individual letters. Now I'm not a big fan of just printing it directly, even if that is your end result, that you want to have a hard copy for each one of these. By editing the individual letters, this gives you the ability to not only preview what you have, but also to customize. Maybe your customization is something that you're just going to put in manually. Later in the series, we'll look at how we can customize based upon various criteria. So for this, I will edit the individual letters. And we want to merge which records? Well, in this case, I'll do all of them, but you can see that you would be able to control. Maybe you only want the first five. So the end result is a separate document. We did customize the letter, but now I have letters one. And this actually then has a page for each one of those contacts, whether you have nine or 90. And let's change our view so that we can see that a little bit more easily. Here, I'll go to view and multiple pages, and we can simply move through and scan to see if there's anything we'd like to modify here. It's looking good. 
And we're now ready to print out these letters. It's good to know that we don't have any links back to that letter doc. So if you make any changes there, you would want to then rerun the mail merge. And that's our look at getting started with mail merge in Word. To discover other ways to be productive with Microsoft Word or to join my free tips letter, visit thesoftwarepro.com slash word. If you found this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to this channel for other time-saving software tips. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.